Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. This is going to be the long awaited Sig Sauer MSR 1 to 10 LPVO scope review. Not just the unboxing, the review. I took my time with this and it took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to be as thorough as I possibly could considering there are no other videos on YouTube uh, regarding this scope. So uh, let's get into it. So right off the bat, if you haven't already watched the unboxing video, go ahead and swing over to my channel and go watch it. And if you haven't seen the Palmetto State Armory PA-10 uh, accuracy video, I would go watch that as well because it does show uh, the sighting in and the initial use of this scope, which did very, very well for that purpose. So to clarify something, I only ever reviewed this scope on one rifle, my PSA PA-10 Gen 3 308 rifle. So going over the specs, uh, you have your magnification knob, which does go from 1 power to 10 power. There is a throw lever that is already threaded into it that you can remove if you don't want to use it. The first impression right off the bat is that this thing is a little bit sticky. It's not going to slide from 1 to 10 super quickly like some other optics. Um, it's actually kind of tight. One thing that I appreciate about SIG is they went ahead and marked all the torque specs on the already included scope mount, which will make this thing much easier to properly set up. As you can see, there are capped turrets for the adjustment knobs for both windage and elevation, and you adjust them at 0.5 MOA per click. I know that the Razer 1 to 10 from Vortex, I'm pretty sure it's a 0.25 MOA adjustment per click, but remember, this is a $500 version of a 1 to 10, not a $2,500 version. On the side, you have your illumination knob, which does have up to 11 settings. And as a quick note, it is not a daylight bright optic when it comes to the illumination built into the scope. So just keep that in mind, but it's still very usable. So now moving on to the reticle and magnification. Keep in mind, I had my iPhone mounted on a tripod behind this rifle that was mounted with a bipod to keep it as stable as possible. But the camera is only able to focus on one thing at a time, rather the reticle or the image that you're seeing through your scope. So it's actually very clear, uh, as you could probably see here, I'm trying to focus on the dial a little bit more to see if that changes anything. Um, but just keep in mind, it's a lot more clear of a picture. There's only so much that my scope is gonna be able to, or my camera is gonna be able to pick up. Um, as you see, it's a very clear picture. Um, the eye relief right here is set very well. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind, it is kind of like looking through a toilet paper roll. You can see just how much um, scope outline there is uh, on the sides as compared to the Vortex Razor or the Viper series that I will show you later in this video uh, that don't appear to have really any of the scope um, shadow on the outsides. So this is gonna be with the illumination uh, turned on to maximum. I believe this was 11. Uh, so as you can see, this is a bright day. Uh, you can still see uh, as you can see, as I'm uh, messing up the eye box, you can still see the reticle pretty well, um, but it's not daylight bright like the Razer or the Viper series from Vortex. So, uh, but yeah, still very usable. I did use it uh, on my hog hunt. So if you check this out, I'm checking out the eye box right here. Um, LPVOs are known to have pretty tight eye boxes and you, you know, it's not like a red dot where you can uh, have a pretty messed up position uh, with your gun from a weird firing angle and be able to still see the dot. Um, you can still see the reticle itself, even from all these weird positions, but it's gonna be as if you're having an occluded sight, uh, which is something you should actually train with, uh, with an LPVO, and I'll get into that later. Uh, but yes, the eye box is gonna be tight because it is an LPVO, but I will say that this eye box is a tad bit tighter than most, so keep that in mind. So right here, I try to show you guys the eye relief uh, just at 1x. So right here where my head is gonna be uh, positioned in a little bit, um, right there it stops. This is the max that I'm actually able to see any sort of image. It's not gonna be a full image, it's a partial image. Um, and then this right here is where I'm able to see the full image, uh, a full picture. And I'm roughly almost four inches away from the reticle, uh, from the, the glass. So people have been saying, well, you gotta be right up against the glass to be able to see anything. No, you don't. It's not like an ACOG where your nose is touching the charging handle. Uh, even at 10X, I was able to see everything from this same position. So because this is a new optic, I'm going to go ahead and compare it to two other optics that I already own. One being a very popular one, the Vortex Strike Eagle, uh, but this is the Gen 1. 
This is a one to six LPVO made by Vortex and this was their budget option. And I think at the time I bought this for around 300 something dollars. So now looking at the glass quality and the reticle of the Strike Eagle one to six, this is an older optic, it is gen one. So the glass is actually pretty clear, but it's a little bit fuzzy and uh, you know, not as clear as other options are, uh, especially like this SIG 1 to 10. The illumination is also not daylight bright, uh, but it's still very usable. One thing I will say about the 1 to 6 uh, from Vortex is that this, uh, this dial is actually pretty smooth. Granted, I have a bigger throw lever on here, but it moves a lot smoother when you're going from 1 to 6 rather than the SIG 1 to 10. And I believe that's because inside of the 1 to 10 from SIG, you're actually having to move uh, the glass inside or the mechanism inside of the scope a further distance uh, just due to having increased magnification levels. As you can see here, you can still use this sight kind of like a red dot, kind of like an occluded sight, which again, I will explain later, um, even without a perfect sight picture. Uh, just keep in mind the eye box is still a little bit tight because it is an LPVO. So this is just something you're going to have to get used to if you get this kind of optic. So I've had a couple people ask me if I was going to compare this or if I could compare it to the Vortex Viper PST 1-6 Gen 2 LPVO. And I decided to do so because it's a higher quality optic, yet it's not um, the Razor series that's super expensive. So as you can see, kind of like I explained earlier, you have less of a scope like shadow uh, around the uh, outside. So it kind of helps you focus on the picture itself rather than looking through a toilet paper roll. The glass on this is extremely clear, uh, but it's still not much different from the SIG 1-10. to I will say that it appears that you have a flatter looking image in the Viper because the glass isn't as rounded towards uh, where you look into it. So this is a daylight bright optic. It doesn't really seem like it right here, but that's a, this is an extremely bright day here in Arizona. So as you can tell, the eye box is still not as tight but it's still a tight eye box because it's an LPVO. So again, it's something you're gonna to have to get used to. You're not always gonna get the perfect position on a rifle, and it's something that you're gonna to have to sacrifice for being able to have something that acts like a red dot, uh, but is actually a scope. Thus why I put a red dot on top, I put an RMR on top of this thing, uh, and I'll get into this scope in a different video. So this brings up an important point, being that budget-friendly equipment will not always compare to high-end equipment. So stop expecting budget equipment to perform like high-end equipment. I don't know why, but people think that when they go out and buy a $300 optic, that it's going to be just like the $2,700 optic, but just for a lower price tag. And they're always disappointed with the performance. But that being said, just because it's budget equipment doesn't mean it's instant crap. And on top of that, just because it's expensive equipment doesn't mean you need it. One of the things that people need to keep in mind is that a $500 optic, while it's not going to perform the same way a $2,500 optic will, it doesn't mean that your $500 optic is not usable and that it's crap. I took mine on a hunt and I was able to harvest five hogs and a trophy ram. Uh, and I did this here at Independence Ranch in Gonzales, Texas. I was very pleased with what had happened during this trip. We were there for about three days harvesting five hogs and a trophy ram um, my furthest shot being about 70 yards and my closest shot being about seven. Um, and this optic did great. I had to swing it from, I never really used 10 power to hunt, but I used five power to actually shoot at animals, uh, 10 power to help identify animals at longer distances and one power when I was actually having to shoot a couple running pigs. This optic performed flawlessly. I used the illuminated reticle, um, in darker times at night and at dusk and early morning and the rest of the day I didn't have any illumination on and the scope did very, very, very well. I was very pleased with this scope and you know, initially when I bought the scope, I told myself that if I didn't like it, I would just sell it off, but this is gonna be one that I keep because it did very well for me. So this video was taken at 10 power magnification from about 70 yards. This African exotic game, um, I'm probably wrong, but I believe it's a, a black buck or a bush buck, something like that. Uh, was trotting around and with the 10 power magnification, I got a very, very clear uh, image of him, which was really cool. So after all this footage of the little piglets, I'm going to show you the footage of the first shot that I got. It was about 70 yards. It was a 148 pound pig and there was very little moonlight. So it was very, very dark. So I used 
the illuminated reticle, and I was able to get a headshot at 70 yards on a 148 pound sow. Okay, so video's going. Had a couple hours in the blind, saw a couple piglets before dark. Didn't take them. Then we saw a deer, and as soon as the deer walked away, it kind of tricked us. It was loud, and then as soon as we we heard something else crawling around, and the pig was basically falling around the deer, so I shot it right in the face. So that 308 soft point knocked its eyeball out. Did the job. I think it went into the top of the head and then it kept kicking around. So I gave it a courtesy shot. And I think that went right through its jaw, so. So not too bad for an optic that only cost 500 bucks, had a tight eye box and didn't have a daylight bright reticle. The next footage is gonna be a couple pigs that were about 30, 40 yards away from us, but were running very quickly. Oh my gosh, she's a big one. So the first pig ran really fast and I ended up getting it. The next two ran, you know, decently quick and then the fourth one just kind of walked in. Uh, but they're all about 40 yards away and not to mention I didn't have any illumination on. I was using just the, uh, the reticle itself. The point being, this scope did exactly what I wanted it to do and more. I was able to see things when it was really dark and make accurate hits. I was able to hit things that were running. I was able to easily switch from five power to one power when I really needed it. And then I was able to switch all the way up to 10 power to see things that were pretty far and look into some pretty thick brush. So what do I think of this optic? So for $500, I can get a one to 10 LPVO with an illuminated reticle and a built-in throw lever that I can also remove with a nice sturdy mount with torque specs included. That's a steal. Compared to something like the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2, it's a great scope, but you still need to go buy a good mount for it. And I would never recommend buying those cheap arrow mounts. I've seen them break a lot. Um, so when I bought my uh, Reptilia mount, that was a $300 mount. So I paid 800 bucks total for a one to six optic. Um, just keep that in mind. So obviously the pros are that you have your mount included. There is a throw lever that can be removed. The glass is clear. It's a very rugged optic. I dropped my rifle a couple times and smacked that thing on some rocks and it held zero. Um, and the reticle I think is great. I have not yet pushed the reticle out to longer distances, but I will do that in a video coming soon. So the cons, um, it's an LPVO, so it's heavy. It's about 18 ounces. Um, there's no reticle info, which I thought was retarded. I don't know what SIG was thinking there. Um, it does have a tight eye box. Um, compared to other LPVOs, the eye box is tight. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and the magnification dial is kind of stiff. So I'm not sure if there's any way that you can loosen that up or lube it up or oil it or if they don't recommend that at all, uh, but just keep that in mind, it's gonna be kind of tight. You can still do it fairly quickly, but it's not gonna be as quick as something like a Strike Eagle. So like I said I would, we need to go over the occluded optic uh, concept. So I went through a red dot transition course in my police department as we are now all using red dot sights on our handguns. Uh, one of the things that we had to do is they ended up putting blue tape over the front of our optic so that we could not see through it. You know, the dot was still present, but you can't see your target. So what they wanted you to do was focus on the target itself, because you have to keep both eyes open, focus on the target itself, and superimpose the dot on the target. So this is kind of like using an ACOG. For some people that already know, it's called the Binden Aiming Technique, where basically you're focused on the target, with your non-dominant eye and then your whatever eye is looking through the optic is able to superimpose that dot on the target so basically what happens it's like an illusionary effect where you will see through the tape that has been put on your optic and so basically what this means for an lpvo as long as you are using both eyes open on your target and you are target focused not focused on the reticle itself you can still superimpose and still put that red um the red reticle on your target and still make effective hits even if you don't have a perfect sight picture even if your 
you know, your eye box if you're off, you know, just a little bit low like you just saw, or low or just off to the sides, you know, up or up top just like that, you could still make effective hits. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, I would just look up the bend and aiming technique um, and just, you know, look up ACOGs, stuff like that. And that's how these dudes are able to shoot both eyes open with magnified optics. So I hope this review has helped you decide whether or not you want to buy this and use it for yourself. I think it's a great option. I am no way saying that this is better than the high-end Vortex optics because it isn't better, but it works really well. I'm not even going to say it's just as good because it's not just as good, but what you can do with it, you can do all the same things that you could do with those optics with this one. Just don't expect it to be as good. I'm getting kind of sick of all the tactical elitism out there with people that only go and buy the most expensive freaking optic because some dude on Instagram or on YouTube uses it. And then all they do is take it to a range and shoot at paper with it. You know, you never see those guys with those kinds of optics going and actually using them, you know, in situations like hunting. Sometimes you do, but not often. So you have to ask yourself the question, what do you really need? You know, this is a perfectly viable option. Yeah, it might not be as super duper expensive and fantastic as the, you know, high-end Vortex series, but it's going to do really well. So just keep that all in mind when you're trying to purchase something. Also, just beware. There's people out there that are trashing this optic already, and they don't even have it. Some of them just picked it up at a store and said, oh yeah, iBox is terrible, can't see, eye relief is horrible, yep, don't buy it. You know, the, the thing wasn't even mounted on a rifle. So stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to go over uh, the reticle itself and try to do some long range pokes so that I can get you some data on the holdovers that SIG did not include. Thanks for watching and check out our new Instagram page.